Drew McQueenie. We're here at WonderCon. We've just come off stage, and I have with me my very special guest, Guillermo del Toro. Hola. Guillermo, um, that blew the walls out, man. That was so much fun to watch with them. Um, now, you've had a couple of screenings. Yeah. What's it like seeing with an audience as each of these beats unfold? It's been great. I mean, the first screening we had, uh, there were still 50% of the effects incomplete, so it was great. It was very loud. It was nice. But the second one was basically like, like a concert. It was like, you know, you never liked showing your movie, ever. You know, you ultimately, even if the screenings go well, you're nervous. But the second screening, like five or ten minutes in, I just enjoyed it. Yeah. I loved it. And, and uh, we, we've been um, very, very happy with them, very well received, and uh, learning a lot. Learning a lot. Each screening tells you where to uh, tighten, where to finesse, and, and uh, very, very happy. One of the, I know that for you, as for many of us, the first thing you read of Travis's was Killing on Carnival Row, yeah. which was such a great piece of world building yes. that it really suggested what his strength was. Yeah. Um, did you have any idea when you started this just how deep and rich that world would become as you guys worked? Yeah, but, but the, the, the hard decision to make in these things is because we have so much to tell that uh, basically what I do wisely or unwisely in the movies I make is divide the information in two and half of it goes to just visuals or audio. You know, I, I, I just show it. I don't talk about it. I don't say what it is. And uh, some people like that, some people hate that, but, but I find it really necessary to, to create the world and not explain a lot, just let it be there and breathe. And, uh, and we divided the information like that, and then uh, we co-wrote for about a year. Mm. You know, we, we, we layered that, that universe little by little, and uh, he's a great partner. I mean, uh, Travis, uh, Killing Carnival Row is still one of my favorite pieces I've ever read. It's, um, it's interesting because the first time I, I saw the Pacific Rim script, there's that glossary, a yeah. couple of pages up front, you realize, oh my God, they, I mean, there's vocabulary I'm gonna have to learn just yeah. to get my head around kind of how this world works. Yeah. Yet, in, that, in the four, four and a half minutes, whatever that was, I think you convey all the big ideas very easily and very quickly. I don't think the audience is ever going to feel like an info dump is happening. Well, what, what we did, what we did that was really fortunate is uh, uh, we uh, we took the opportunity to work with Mirada, the company we created, uh, and and have Mirada develop a, a sort of prologue. Uh, right after my first few opening images, we go into a prologue of documentary, quote unquote, footage mm -hmm. that concentrates. The, the all the years of the war in about two minutes. And uh, it was brilliantly done by the guys at Mirada, uh, Matthew Cullen, uh, one of the best commercial directors that is one of the partners of the company. He really took it to heart. And it's in very different style. I didn't want to, to have images that look like the rest of the movie. I needed really gritty uh, found footage or this and that. And, and the movie is in a very, very elaborate, very almost painterly style with mm -hmm. a lot of rich, it looks like a uh, 1990s uh, acid trip comic book, like yeah. heavy metal or Richard Corbin, or really saturated colors. And the prologue is the opposite, is uh, surveillance cameras, uh, camera phones, blah, blah, blah. And we tell you all that story quickly and, and we do it succinctly and, and in a fun way. Now what, what is most gratifying as somebody who has known you for so long and has seen how hard you fight for your films, and I know that you know on the Hellboys you were able to make the films you were able to make and there was always compromise, there's always a sense that you were pushing right at the edge of your budget, right at the edge of your schedule. Yeah. This feels like you've really been given the leash to make this film. Yeah, what was great is we agreed on a size and, and it's, not, it's a movie that I knew I wanted it to look two, three times the size of the budget. Still, mm -hmm. that's your duty as director. But Legendary and Warners were very clear. They said, this is your number, this is your ballpark. If you go out a thousand bucks, you're in deep poop. You're, you're, you're gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be very hard for, and so I, I knew it was a fiscal exercise as much as a creative one, but I knew, unlike any other time I've ever gone to the bat, that th there was enough money there to, to realize it. It was gonna be tough, it was gonna be tight, but there was enough. And, and, uh, and it's the first time I felt that paired with the creative freedom, now completely. It's a, I, I think a lot of people, when they hire an effects company like ILM, it, they, they kind of hand over responsibility for the look of things to them. But you guys did all of your design work in-house first. Yes. And then Before took, production those, started. took those assets to the yeah. companies and said, would you try this? Um, is that something that they appreciated when they came on board, that there was that much 
already laid out, and then it was really up to them to find a way to visually bring those things to life? Well, not only that, what we did with ILM is unique, and, and John Knoll, uh, who was our effects supervisor, and is a genius. You, you know? can't get any better you than that. You can't get any better than that. John, who said, we couldn't afford them. We went in and their budget was almost all my budget. So I said, can I try something? I mean, I'm very disciplined with VFX. I come from an FX background. And I said, can we try a new approach? And he, we tried a new approach that has never been tried, uh, that cut the budget in about 50%. Wow. But it required me to go basically linear from start to finish and not have one of those moments where you go, nah, the monster should have three legs, because that's what drives a lot of the money up. Yeah. And he said, I'm gonna trust you, and it's a big experiment, and we did it, and we are still, uh, as of today, we are still under budget. It's amazing, yeah. it really is, because the, the thing that I got from this presentation, which is so rare, is I feel like we just saw four and a half minutes of crazy money shots. Yes. I also feel like I haven't seen anything yet. Yeah, you're right. No, we, we, there's, there's a couple of good money shots in that trailer, but we have so much more. The, the thing is, the context in the movie uh, means everything for the fights. The fights uh, and the color palette, uh, there's a moment, the Hong Kong fight, the, Hong, the battle for Hong Kong is what we call is a siege that goes on from almost, for almost two reels. And, uh, and it becomes almost surreal in color. And it's almost surreal in, in texture. It becomes really, really like beautiful, almost like a theatrical operatic play with wild colors and wild lights. And uh, in order to put that in a trailer, it would be too shocking. Yeah. So you, you, you have to put things that are, don't require that much context. What's well, interesting is I remember on set, I think we came while you were near the end of Hong Kong. Yes. We were, the sets were already demolished. It yeah. looks like mayhem had happened already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you said at that point that you felt like it was your favorite thing you'd shot yeah. of just your career. Like that yeah. you felt like a summation. I think that uh, it certainly is of my big, film, big films, the one I love the most. And I love it with the same passion I would love Devil's Backbone or Pants. You know, but uh, it's obviously a different tone. This is a movie that I would have liked uh, when I was 11 or 12, and I'm basically hoping that uh, the kids embrace it like that. But, but uh, we, did, we, we did go through incredible physical lengths. I gained, now I've lost 95 pounds, but I gained 70 pounds during the shoot of the movie out of the stress, and, but it was good stress. We, I wanted, for example, we did crazy things. We rigged an entire street of Tokyo we rigged it with hydraulics underneath just to get the effect of the whole street shaking when the kaiju is oh. walking, you know? So we rigged uh, several hundred feet of pavement and walls and everything. So when, the, when people see it, they think, oh, it's CG or it's not. It's we, are, we rigged the cars, we rigged the floor, we rigged the windows, we rigged the lampposts, we rigged the puddles. Everything is rigged, the whole set shake when the kaiju is walking. But I think it's worth it to go that extra length for something you love. For breaking entertainment news and more, follow at HitFix on Twitter or visit HitFix.com.